time, at the same time, <laughs> on the same trip. Um, I don't know, I just remember making friends with everybody. Everybody was really nice, and they were all super welcoming, and despite the huge language barrier, everybody just seemed to make a lot of really good connections and have a really good time. So the, I, the fact that we couldn't speak the same language didn't get in the way of the fact that we were all really good friends. Yeah, um, I remember just everywhere I would go, even in the most odd places, there'd be some welcome signs, or it'd be like, welcome for Bag. I'd walk by just any like gas, gas station. It'd be like on the the gas pump, would be like, welcome for Bag. <laughs> and yeah, like I said, I don't think language was a big deal. And I think every moment with them was memorable. I don't think there's like a specific thing. We'd go to the beach and we all have fun. We'd, I don't know where else we go. And it wasn't just school. the kids, it was the adults too. Like yeah. everybody was just really nice. Even people that we didn't know, like who weren't related to the family. It was like we'd see kids on the street and they would be really nice to us. It was fun. It was no, super I, awesome. Yeah. I mean there's just there's really <laughs> I never actually got to go to Japan just because I didn't have enough money. Mm -hmm. Um but when I had the girl come stay with me, it was really interesting watching her experience Fort Bragg for the first time and watching her find like what American food was like and well, I remember one specific memory was when we went to Dorelio's and I think we ordered like one of everything on the menu and she tried everything and I think her favorite was this, uh, the pesto raviolis. <laughs> so, so good. I remember that too, I remember when I hosted one of the one things that they give us all lists of like things they want to do and like their hobbies and stuff one of the things on the list was hamburgers. It was like hamburgers and ice cream. So we one night we had like hamburgers and tater tots and ice cream for dinner and we watched Japanese anime movies in, with American subtitles in Japanese and it was just the super intense bonding experience where we just both sat on the bed and ate like burgers and tater tots and then had ice cream afterwards. And it was, afterwards she was like, yes, that was awesome. And I was like, good. <laughs> it was cool. kind of experience that you have together. Stayed, or we stayed in the town of Otsuchi, which mm -hmm. is in the Iwate prefecture, and it's kind of like this really small, well, 16,000 people. Bigger compared to Yeah, us, big compared to small. here, but mm -hmm. yeah, like 16,000 person fishing town. Um, we all stayed in different host families, Holly and I did not stay with each other. Yeah. Um, Usually two American, for our group at least, it was two American kids to one Japanese family. Yeah, mm -hmm. but everything we did was usually within the group. As I mean, occasionally the family would take us to like their grandparents' house, or, you know, like, I there I were. Went, I went to a tea shop with my host yeah. there. But we did everything together, which I guess sometimes relieves certain tensions where it's like, <laughs> you'd be at home, and you'd be like, so, oh, I don't know. And they'd be like, doing. what are you saying? Like, <laughs> so, I, but, and a lot the of the food students, was good. Oh, God, the food was incredible. And a lot of the students were friends with one another, so we would just, like, yeah. pair up. I remember I went shopping with Leanne's host family, and, I remember there was one girl who threw a party and had a bunch of the other host families come over, and so it was just like things like that. So it wasn't necessarily everybody as a community, but we were all interconnected. Mm -hmm. They're so nice. I know. There's, they like, were. there's nothing else to say. They are the friendliest people ever. No, anyone I met there would just have open arms and just <laughs> give you a big hug. And just... So. I was in the beginning. I remember being super worried about because I originally I heard that there was an earthquake in Japan, and I was like, "Oh, well, that's bad." And then I realized that the tsunami afterwards had completely destroyed the entire town. And a lot of people are using the word devastated, but I really don't think that that's an accurate description of how I felt, like, yeah. seriously. I honestly... I have I, never felt that bad in my entire life about something that scary. I was more in shock for the first two days. Like, I just did, I was like, Googling just different articles on specifically on Suchi, and I'm like, this is, this is all a lie. This is just a scam. Kids are posting mean things that aren't true. And then I think eventually I just broke down, but... I spent so much time on that internet the first week just going on the Google People Finder, going yeah, on like I, the I Facebook page for Utsuchi, seeing if who else was uh, that we knew was found. I mean, 
But it, it got better because a lot of us started getting email messages from our friends, like telling us that our host families were okay, and we would find out through Facebook that other yeah. people's host families were okay. And there was a lot of good news. There was some bad news. A couple of people that were really close to the program we know died, but oh. um, but most of our families are safe. Yeah. When the tsunami first happened, I don't think any of us really realized how horrible it had been in specifically Otsuchi because it's Otsuchi has suffered the most damage in Japan. I know for Cassandra and I were actually I spent the night at Cassandra's house. Mm -hmm. The I was at her house the day that it actually happened. And at first we didn't realize how horrible it was and we didn't even it, I, I thought, oh you know, Otsuchi's fine. It's in the more yeah, northern well, like, area. It's only four hours away from Tokyo. It only hit near Tokyo and then So I just... we, we didn't I don't think we expected and then when, when I found out how horrible it had been I think I cried a lot. Yeah, uh, I, I definitely remember spending excessive amounts of time doing nothing but crying, just kind of hanging and, out. And it, it was awful, but it was actually also the first time I got Facebook because I realized that I could connect with my friends in Otsuchi through Facebook. Mm -hmm. yeah, Finding out if they're okay. Yeah, internet, yeah. yeah. I so. think for me right now, um, instead of just like being completely devastated, because, wait, well, you know, of course, I'm devastated over it or even worse than that but I think right now it's just more of a waiting game and you just have yeah. to see how things turn out and as badly as I would just like like to know if it's gonna be okay now and if everybody's like can come here and like all that I know that it's gonna take a long time and it's just right now it's just kind of you just need to accept it how it is. I think right now a lot of it is more about um, keeping hope that everything's gonna be okay and raising money and just waiting until the planes start moving and we have a place to go so that we can start rebuilding because that's really the part that we have to focus on most now. And I think that's probably the hardest part is that we aren't able to be there with them. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I, I, if you think about it, like if we were there, we would just kind of be another mouth to feed that, and yeah. they don't have enough food or enough water or so, enough heat for themselves. So I don't know. I understand why us being there would be not only an impossibility but also a burden. But it's just like the idea that we want to be there to comfort them or bring them here. It's the part that yeah, I know. Bring them here. They can live in my house. I'd be okay with that. Take my bedroom. I'll sleep on the kitchen. <laughs> I'll sleep I outside. Don't, <laughs> don't care. Like we could just get the entire population to be like you. You know just. just stuff that in the house or something. And honestly, I feel like with the kind of response we've been getting from the rest of the town about like how much money we've raised and how much support they've shown us, I feel like if we just brought the entire remaining population <laughs> here to live in, in town in people's houses, they would do that. Yeah. I just feel I, like they yeah. would. Actually, I'm so shocked how much, we, like, or how much the group has raised mm -hmm. in the last few weeks. Six, somewhere around sixty thousand right now. Yeah, I our think goal our, was our originally ultimate 50. goal is, uh, yeah. well, yeah, it was fifty thousand, but now it's a hundred thousand. All right, thank you. <laughs>